Um, uh, what do we know about Liverpool at the moment behind the scenes? Michael Edwards, uh, we understand, held face-to-face talks with Liverpool owners, uh, Fenway Sports Group, FSG in Boston last weekend about returning to Anfield. And now we hear there could well be an agreement in place. Um, uh, this is the man they want. This is the man they had. This is the man they want back. Alex Crook, Talk Sports Chief Football Correspondent, joins us live. Alex, good morning. Where are they on this, Liverpool? Good morning, Jim. Good morning, Simon. Well, as you mentioned there, Jim, it's been no secret for the past few weeks that Liverpool have been trying to get Michael Edwards back to the football club. Looks like an agreement has now been reached between Edwards and Liverpool's owners, FSG. And this is a slightly different role than the one that he did before. He was there for a decade, oversaw an awful lot of success. They won the Champions League, they won the Premier League. He was instrumental in the hiring of of Jurgen Klopp and the signings of people like Virgil van Dijk and Sadio Mane. But he's going to oversee all of the football operations on behalf of FSG, and that will require hiring his own sporting director. So somebody to do the job that he did so well before, if you like, and we understand that will be Richard Hughes, who is currently serving his notice at Bournemouth. He's been technical director uh, down on the South Coast and, and done a pretty good job there. So Michael Edwards in as a sort of overlord, if you like, of the post Jurgen Klopp era, Richard choose to join him as director of football, technical director, uh, whatever title you want to give him. And then, of course, between them, they're going to have to hire Klopp's replacement. And I understand Xabi Alonso very much remains the favourite for that role. Simon, it seems that th- this is sense all round, isn't it? Because Liverpool know what they're getting and, and Edwards knows what he's getting back into. Yeah, I, I think um, a, a driver for this will be the recruitment process to replace Klopp and what the football club is going to be post-Klopp. Because obviously... Klopp has been so omnipotent and so invested and you're seeing the fruits of his labour not only in the team's first team performance but the youth generation that's coming through into the first team and the overall well-being of the club's recruitment policy. Now that can be diminished by the loss of a first team manager. So Michael Edwards coming back and adding some continuity to what was a previously successful regime and potentially having the intellectual capital to open the doors to who may manage Liverpool after Jurgen Klopp leaves Yeah, I think is a significant... Uh, you know, viewpoint and a significant development level of thinking from sure, Liverpool. Sure thing. Alex, you know Bournemouth inside out, um, very much on your patch. Mind you, the whole of England's on your patch. Uh, Richard Hughes, you, you'll know him. How effective is he? Well, I think he's been really effective. He's been part of the technical team for the past decade. He's overseen not one, but two promotions to the Premier League. It was a difficult scenario for Bournemouth, not comparing it to Jurgen Klopp, but Eddie Howe was a Klopp-like figure on the South Coast when he left at the end of their relegation season. In the end, Richard Hughes settled upon Scott Parker as the man to lead Bournemouth back into the Premier League. He did that. He took that big decision, didn't he, to relieve Parker of his duties, gave Gary O'Neill his first job in frontline management and what a success that turned out to be, keeping Bournemouth up against the odds. It was another big call in the summer to allow O'Neill to move on and to bring in Andoni Iriola. Didn't win a game, Iriola, for the first 10 matches, but there was no panic there. They wanted a, a different style of play. They're not in any danger, I don't think, in terms of going down. So I think he's done a really good job. There's been some recruitment successes. Obviously, there's been some recruitment failings as well. He would admit that, but... If you look at when they were first promoted to the Premier League, he helped bring the likes of Callum Wilson uh, to the football club. Obviously scored so many goals to get Bournemouth up and keep them there. They've had to rebuild the squad a couple of times. He's used the foreign market quite well recently. Milos Kerkez, uh, young left-back, is a player that they signed Bournemouth who's attracting interest from uh, top clubs, not just in England, but in Europe as well. Same too with Ilya Zabani, the Ukrainian centre-back. So I think overall, his body of work at Bournemouth has been has been very impressive. And I think Simon's right in terms of Liverpool having to get it right behind the scenes in the boardroom before they can even think about hiring a new manager. And I'll compare it to when Sir Alex Ferguson left Manchester United. Obviously, it was a much longer dynasty and it was always going to be difficult to follow Fergie. David Gill left at the same time and they never really found a suitable replacement for him. And that's been a big problem Mm. that I think United are still feeling the effects of. Uh, what have you got some doubts, Simon, about Richard Hughes? No, I just I'm curious to see the the, the comparison between recruiting mm. for a bottom tier Premier League side in Bournemouth and recruiting for the required success that you have at Liverpool. It's like Dan Ashworth being recruited 
at Brighton, building a network of young players that are coming through and, 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 and being able to build Brighton into a side that okay. sells players for 100 million quid. Same as Dougie Friedman from Manchester United. Well, uh, well Dougie Friedman, uh, again, would be a question mark about the reality of what he's recruited for Crystal Palace. For me, having known the personality and knowing what he has recruited and some of those players have gone on to, when I'm looking at Liverpool and saying you've got a formula that's potentially working, you're about to do a quadruple, potentially. And I question, just question and debate. I'm not going to question whether Michael... Michael Edwards is occupying a new role. Previously, he was the person that was employed by someone else. He's now the person that's employing other people. So yeah. He's got a very different modus operandi. It'd be interesting to see how Richard Hughes will translate from a buying policy that enables clubs to stay in the Premier League and do quite well in that respect yeah. to a club's expectation that's going to win the Premier League. Uh, Alex, before you go, a very nice moment for Tom Locke here tomorrow, who has had his challenges of late, to say the least of it. Of course, had cardiac arrest on the on the pitch. Uh, the the um, the Luton captain, a VIP guest tomorrow for the rearranged Bournemouth versus Luton match. And of course, it was on the pitch at Bournemouth where he collapsed on the ground. Right. Yeah, this is a, a real feel-good story. We broke it exclusively uh, on the notebook on the TalkSport website yesterday. As you say, he's been invited, uh, Tom Lockyer, to attend the game uh, as Bournemouth's special guest. He'll be the fans' champion. They have uh, somebody doing that role for every match, I understand it, and he'll be bringing the match ball out, placing it on the P Premier League plinth before kickoff and saluting those fans because, of course, it was really emotional, wasn't it, when he did suffer that uh, horrible collapse on the pitch when the original game was abandoned in December. The Bournemouth fans were singing his name. Uh, members of the Bournemouth Medical Department played a big role in saving his life. So I think this is Tom Lockyer's opportunity to say thank you. It is uh, on the proviso that he's able to get away because he became a dad uh, last week, but he is expected to be at the game. And I think it's going to be a really uh, emotional evening down at the Vitality. Alex, thank you very much indeed. Good luck to Tom Lockyer. I hope to speak to him uh, sometime soon. Alex, of course, Topsworth's chief football correspondent. Right across the lot, so are we, we like to think. It's 11.30. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.